morning. Oh my gosh, y'all. I'm, oh, Paul Kiker's here and I'm so forever thankful. I'm so thankful. I don't like driving in the rain. I don't like the roads that are dangerous. I don't like anything that scares me. Rainy roads scare me. And so I drove slowly up here today <laughs> and I get here and I have this package waiting on my desk and I can't even read you about it. And I have said, God has been following every single step I've made. And somebody asked me one day, they said, why do you do what you do? And I said, because God is watching me. God mm -hmm. is watching me. He's not watching anybody else that he's watching me. And so when we opened this mail and it just took me, wow, wow. So I'm going to have you read about it in a few minutes because okay. we, whew, it, uh, it overcame me. And I'm going to have this gentleman on as a guest. And I'm excited to do that, and I'm excited to share his book. But the topic of his book, just because today on the way up here, I'm I'm holding on, and I'm I'm next to a tractor and trailer, and it's swaying, and I'm like, God, please don't let me have a wreck, don't let anything happen to me, please let me stay safe. And I'm just praying and talking to God. And I get here, and this book's on the set, and I'm like, what? <laughs> <laughs> so it's weird. It's just been a weird morning. But uh, I'm so glad you're here. You brighten my days. And, you know, this is a book. We talk about this. I use it a lot. This is from my cousin Joan, who went to be with the Lord way, way, way too early. Mm. This was her book. And so we try to cheer you up. And, and this, uh, it's just, it's going to be one of them days. Today is February the 4th. And this is, my daughter Dawn gave me this. And last night somebody called me and we were doing Bible verses and she was talking about Isaiah. And Isaiah is a very strong something. Isaiah gives you something to come out of. And, and so I'm, I'm reading this and it says, They that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings on eagles as eagles. They shall run and not be weary. And they shall walk and not faint. So when we get to a point that we think we're just going to collapse, we're not going to make it, then he's there and his power is there. And woo! now you can read about this book. I can't read about it. I just was like, oh my gosh. But it, it is a love story. Yes, it so is. Can you talk about that a little bit? I sure will. So. I mean, literally. It kind of take you back to? It did. When I started reading it, Woo! when she was reading it, I didn't get teary-eyed. When I read it, because I, I needed to read it before I read it to you, I was like, oh, I'm going to have a hard time. Yes. Um, but, you know, going back to that scripture before we go, God doesn't tell us that just because everything's easy. Yes. He tells yeah. us that because life is hard sometimes. Yes, yes. And, and if we rely upon him, he'll get us through it in ways that we could never imagine getting through. Oh, when, yeah. when we can't go, yeah. he gives us the strength to go. Yep, absolutely. So uh, so this is Kenny Noble Cortez, apparently from Blue Ridge. Mm -hmm. I don't Lives know Lives in Blue Kenny. Ridge now. Lives yep. in Blue Ridge now. A Culture Shock is the book that he wrote. It's called One Foot Culture in the World. Jock. Culture Jock. Culture Jock. Culture Jock, yes. That, that's me. Yeah, Freudian that's slip. You. <laughs> so Culture Jock, uh, yep. One Foot in the World, One Foot in the Church. So he sent this to Sherry and God delivered it on a day she needed it. Woo, I just about passed out. I was like, oh, you're kidding me. So I'll read the whole letter to you. It says, hi, Sherry. My name is Kenny uh, Noble Cortez, resident of Blue Ridge and author of Culture Jock, an autobiography that details most every mistake I ever made in the 50 years of my marriage my wife Kay and I have experienced. We were engaged while a senior in high school. With Valentine's Day coming up, discussion of saving relationships could be an interesting topic for one of your shows. Plus, I'm a broadcaster with major market experience in Houston, Chicago, Los Angeles, Seattle, Miami, Denver, and San Antonio. Those are big markets. Yes. The pitfalls in our business are many. Culture Jock is my story of navigating broadcasting's challenging waters but surviving. A twist in the story came in 2020 when my wife suffered glioblastoma brain tumors and a subsequent severe anoxia event rendered her a quadriplegic with no ability to speak or move any muscle. I am her caregiver and it's not easy, oh but it is God. what God has planned for me. So here I am. Wow. Wow. So um, it says, thank you for any consideration you may give me for an interview. Think relationships as we approach Valentine's Day. I'm well versed in, in what not to do to enhance marital relationships. Yeah. 
Valentine's Day can be so much more than roses, chocolates, and flowery cards, blessings. And he puts Philippians 4.13 on there, which I need to look up Philippians yes, 4.13. Yes, look it up. Look, this um, just, oh, and, and y'all, I just, I don't like rainy days. And I got a call from a dear friend on the way up here, and they've lost a family member, and we're talking. And, and I'm like, when are you leaving for the funeral? When's this happening? When's that? And then I walk into this, and I'm like, how much more obvious can God be in our lives? I mean, it's like he's just right here with us. Right. Well, find it. Philippians 4, 13, 11, 13. I knew this, but yes. I wanted to make sure yes. it says, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Yes, 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 absolutely, absolutely. And uh, That's fantastic. I, uh, yeah, that, I can't wait to read the book. I'm <laughs> excited, I'm excited, and I'm excited to meet him and to get to have him here on the show. So, you know, God does send us strength when we need it. So right now, we're gonna take a commercial break quickly because because I've been crying a little bit, I got to go get a tissue. <laughs> and I just, when I read that, I didn't know what his story was going to be, but for his wife, and he's her caregiver. Yeah. And I, I have a dear, dear friend, Mr. Kenneth Ray, that I adore, and he took care of his wife for 13 years. And she was in the nursing home two days, and he just couldn't handle the care they gave her. So he brought her home, and he took care of her until the last moment of her life. That's the kind of love story we want to share for Valentine's Day. Those are the kind of love stories that, that will last for eons and many, many generations and years. And somebody will always remember that kindness and that wonderful man who took care of his wife who mm -hmm. ended up. And, you know, it could happen to any of us. We say every single day we are not guaranteed tomorrow. I'm so thankful that I can walk in here every single day and I can remember what I'm supposed to do because we've mm -hmm. seen Alzheimer's hit people. We have seen dementia hit people. We have seen cancer take down so many of our friends, and we have seen people bounce back from cancer. So we see it every single day, mm -hmm. and it is all in God's plan. So when, when I read the first lines of that, and I thought, oh, this is going to be a cool book, and then I got to the part, and I was like, oh, my gosh, and he's dealing with this now, and how precious is that? So we're going to take a commercial break, and we'll be back in just a minute. Whether you're swimming in the sea or splashing in the pool, making a masterpiece or just making memories. Writing a great American novel or writing your term paper that's due tomorrow. Whatever you do in life, Farmers is here to protect it. For all your insurance needs, call Donald Curtis in Blue Ridge. United Country Talking Rock Realty says it best. I'm happy as long as I can see Sharp Top. From the ground up, new home to complete renovation or remodel, we have combined the amazing workmanship of SGC groups, transforming the forgotten to the fabulous. Teamwork makes the dream work. For buying, selling, or flipping, call Sherry Martin at 404-375-0590 or Evelyn Calhoun at 770-733-0779. Whether you're in the mood for chicken strips, a delicious burger, our classic banana split, or an upside down thick blizzard treat, we've got you covered. Hot and fresh food every day, every time. And delicious DQ soft serve make the perfect pair at your favorite place. Not fast food, fan food fast. Your Blue Ridge, Ella J, and Jasper Dairy Queens are your meat, eat, and treat headquarters. Thank you for choosing DQ, how may I serve you? Georgia Medical Treatment Center now has two locations to bring you the high quality holistic care you've come to know and expect. We treat neck, back, and joint pain with chiropractic care and injection-based treatment without the need for surgery or prescription painkillers. Our medical weight loss program can also provide relief while ridding your body of toxins, pounds, and inches while improving your overall health. Call today for a free consultation, 770-345-2000, or go online to georgiamtc.com. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Freeze. Uh-oh, 
the chicken's froze. Look what Paul got me. Is that not sweet? Somebody gave me that as a gift a while back, and, and I'm so forever grateful for it. And today I needed it because that that just took me because yeah. I thought culture jock that's going to be a cool book and then I don't expect what the ingredients of the book will be and mm -hmm. I'm like holy cow but I can't wait to meet him I can't wait to have him on the show that's going to be exciting I have another book oh I don't have it with me here now it's about dogs and God and it's so sweet and it just hit at the perfect time I, I took the one I had home to give to my daughter because her little dog got killed on Sunday. Oh no. And she goes home and finds her little dog laying in the road dead. So, no. So this has just been one of them tearjerker weeks, just a weird, weird thing. And the last thing I needed, because I, I'm battling a little bit of depression right now, I don't need rain, and I don't need dark, and I don't need dreary. So this is a hard time of year. Some sunshine? Yeah. Yeah, would we be just nice. order some sunshine? We're supposed to get over <laughs> three inches of rain. Ugh. North of here today. Wow. And um, I'm supposed to go walk eight acres when I get out of here. After we go. <laughs> you mean slide eight yeah, acres? Yeah, and I'm like, really? Okay, you want to do that? So I have two umbrellas with me, but, <laughs> but it's, it's, Paul, it's, it's a weird time of year. Um, we are coming out of the dark area where people have a hard time getting through the holidays. I right. have a friend, Sandra, whose son died not far between the time my daughter died and she and I both connect, Linda Jordan, we both connect because we know we lost a daughter too. I mean, it just, there's just so many of us that don't like for the holidays to come. Right. Everybody's so excited about the holidays. More and more and people now. And we're dreading now. it so bad. Yeah, yeah, it's more, hard. It's more hard. people, it amazes me how many as I've built relationships over the years that struggle oh, yeah. with the holidays. There's tons of reasons to be heartbroken. Yep. And speaking of holidays, Jewish holidays, Jewish holidays. I grew up in Morningside area of Atlanta, and I grew up in the um, in Orlando. We had a lot of Jewish neighbors, and in Atlanta we had a lot of Jewish neighbors. Last night watched um, Driving Miss Daisy for probably the 5,000th time. Absolutely love that movie. Love the idea that I can see the streets that I used to walk my beautiful daughter on because she had a stroller, and I would walk her all through the little neighborhood, and that's where Driving Miss Daisy was filmed. Jen went to a deli on Cheshire Bridge and bought me chopped liver. Have you ever had chopped liver? No, and I have no desire to have no, chopped liver. No, you nope. have to have. Nope. It is a very unique taste, <laughs> and you use it on crackers. Oh, yeah. And, and you might have to have a little German, Jewish something going into your body to, to <laughs> like that, but I love it. And so it's so funny, she brought it to me a couple of days ago, and I was like, are you kidding me? This is so cool. Who goes to Cheshire Bridge and gets me this stuff that I grew up on? So, so it was pretty cool. Holly and but, I were talking the other day, my grandfather, I still remember the first time I tried liver. Yes. And, and yeah. mm -mm, no, sorry guys, I know yeah. it's healthy. Yes. I'll yeah. eat it if yes. there's nothing yeah. else to eat. But. When I was expecting Angela, I worked for a really good guy at a construction company, and I did their payroll and bookkeeping, and, and every Thursday, he would take me to this certain place in Atlanta at 10th and Peachtree and make me eat <laughs> liver, and it was calf's liver, and I would just coat it in ketchup. I would put so much ketchup, I know that child never tasted the liver <laughs> because it was coated in ketchup. And I did that every Thursday, and, and to this day, I will remember Jim Carlisle and how he, he fed my baby liver every <laughs> Thursday. And I worked for him until the day I went in labor. And it was so funny because I, I wasn't thinking about healthy eating. My goodness, then, I used to drink. I used to party. I used to do all the bad things that I gave up. Thankful I yes. gave it up. But... Um, I wasn't worried about prenatal vitamins and all that stuff. I was young and, you know, right. my husband liked to go places and uh, we just, you know, I wasn't, I wasn't concerned, but Jim Carlisle, and I will never forget that he owned a company called Chemco Waterproofing. Mm. And I learned very quickly about garnishments because quite a few of our employees had garnishments. <laughs> so I learned about it. So, but, um, Sweet memories from Atlanta and loving the area that I grew up in. Um, wouldn't go back there for anything. Mm -hmm. I mean, not even, you couldn't, if I won the lottery today and I could buy half a Morningside, wouldn't go back there. Mm -hmm. I looked at the taxes on the house we lived in, $18,000 a year. $18,000 a year property tax. Now, that would be, what kind of percentage is that of your income? You'd have to make about 
$250,000 a year, really, to pay $18,000 in property taxes by the time you counted your mortgage, your groceries, your car, your insurance? <laughs> now, I, know the bank, I know the banks will, will loan you on that, but from my perspective, you need to be making more than that to yeah. be having $18,000. Cause Tax bill, just your property tax. Yeah, just Isn't your that property. Crazy? That's not counting mount, maintenance <laughs> on the home. Mm -hmm. That's not counting a mortgage if you have it. Nothing. So you're right. basically living to have a house. Crazy. On a third of an acre. One yeah. third of an acre. So isn't that crazy? So for all you whiners who are in ball ground whining about our taxes and whining about this, quit whining. You could live in Morningside. So yuck, yuck. Okay, what have you got going on as the year begins? Are you seeing good things, bad things, scary things? Um, houses are still way inflated. Yeah, I mean, so, I mean, I would assume that it's gonna continue to carry into the spring. Mm -hmm. um, just it has, but but the reality is inflation is, is here. Inflation's oh substantial, yeah. inflation's causing a lot of problems. More, yeah. I have more conversations about inflation right now than I do anything else. Mm -hmm. um, we're in uncharted, ter uncharted territories. The markets have never been this expensive. Interest rates are magnificently low. And I don't see how investors are going to continue to tie money up for 30 years at 2.7% mm -hmm. if inflation's trucking along at 5 to 6%. Now, most people believe, because this is what the government is telling them, Reminds me of the CDC, but anyway, the government is telling them, I have to slide my smart mm -hmm. comments in there, I know. That, that inflation is transitory. Um, so I think things would change a little bit if the government hadn't so intervened in the markets just to try to manipulate interest rates lower for, for what they believe is the benefit of the economy. It's an artificial economy, yes. but that's what it is. So really, we're 100% reliant upon them economically not the diversification of the economy, but just the fuel that they're they're fueling this with by holding interest rates low. Mm -hmm. And that may be getting ready to change. So the Federal Reserve has at least announced that they're going to raise interest rates. And the big question is, are they like the parent that tells the kid, you better stop that or I'm gonna bust your rear end. Mm -hmm. You better stop that. And the parent has all kinds of bite with no bark mm -hmm. and the kid's behavior never changes. Mm -hmm. We don't know. We don't know. There, mm -hmm. There's. We, we just don't know. So right now, I'm trying not to predict anything. I'm trying to be open-minded, just analyze the data and, and choose to be flexible and have the courage to accept whatever path the Lord lays before us. So, you know, I mean, it could be a fantastic year. Mm -hmm. I mean, there, there are people that argue, oh, we've got midterm election coming up. There's no way that this administration is going to allow the market to get into trouble going in. And I believe that's true mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. If, if they don't lose control. Mm -hmm. So, but we got a lot of factors that are in place. I mean, I don't know if you've been keeping up with what's been going on with Justin Trudeau in Canada and the truckers, have you? Yes, yes. I mean, I mean it's, yes. it's unbelievable. And I don't know if you've been keeping up with what's been going on with Joe Rogan. No. On Spotify. But that, I, I did hear a little bit. That's so weird because I heard a little bit of that last night, which was yeah. rare because I don't usually listen to any of that. Well, I mean, so the, I did the, heard a little bit. The, the, the mainstream media is dead. That, yes. They've been, yes. They've been laid bare for yes. the, for the, for the cowards that they are mm -hmm. and the propaganda that's being generated. And I think the people, you know, several years ago I told you I didn't think the American people had had enough. Mm -hmm. I think the Canadian people have had enough mm -hmm. and they're starting to stand up. And what's amazing is these leaders are cowards. They go hide mm -hmm. and they're not standing up or stepping down. The American people aren't there yet, but you know, imagine if our truckers decide that they're gonna go from California to Washington. What's, what's that going to do to cause us inconvenience in our society? As somebody who was in the trucking business 38 years, there was a point in time that I begged all truckers to park their rigs. Yeah. And this was during the Jimmy Carter era that we couldn't get fuel. We were paying three prices for tires. Our uh, insurance went out the roof. Everything went wrong. And we had no support and no help from our government. And mm -hmm. then they were regulating us to death. Yes. Absolutely. I found an audit the other day that I had to go through. And thank God I went through it because they ended up owing me about $1,800. But they put me through the ringer to do this to me. And I had to produce all this stuff and they chose these certain quarters and it was when we were doing taxes in North Carolina because we had a North Carolina office and it, it was just it was just a, a murky mess. Mm -hmm. But they ended up I was in the good. And I was like, and you put me through all this for they were there like two weeks. It was crazy. 
And I'm like, a trucker's job is to arrive on time to pick up the goods, arrive on time to deliver the goods in a safe manner. Yes. And to protect his life. Yes. And one of the things that we are not protecting today for the truckers, we are not protecting his life because we're allowing everybody else to uh, road rage. Right. I've seen truckers get shot. I've seen their rigs get blown up. I've seen all kinds of crazy stuff. I've not seen any of that. Because That's people are nuts. I have a dear friend whose husband was beaten almost to death in Ohio at a truck stop because he turned to park his truck or something, just some silly something that he, he made somebody angry, you know, and they beat him up with a tire tool. I mean, we are not protecting Americans. We are not protecting those who work hard and deliver our product. Have you ever gone to the bathroom and said, Holly, we're out of toilet paper. What if a trucker didn't bring it to you? What you gonna do? Yeah. Corn cob boy? What you gonna no, no. do? You know? So we America does not run without the truckers, but we don't support the truckers like we should. We don't supply them what they need. We don't supply them safe roads to travel on. And if you could see what's collected on twenty two ninety tax returns every year, every single trucker pays this huge amount of money for the right to operate on those roads. Mm -hmm. None of these cars running around here pay a dime to operate on those roads, but the truckers do. And then the truckers are hitting potholes that knock them out of alignment. And alignment on a big rig is a whole lot more expensive than alignment on your yeah. car. We're not taking care of them. So Canada, shut her down, do whatever you got to. Truckers get together, band together. Yeah. And that's something they don't do. And I don't know why. There'll be a group of them here that will say, let's do it. A group of them here, well, we've got to work. And I understand that. I have to work. I understand that. But I also understand if you bring about change, it's worth it. Well, and two, the government's done a really good job over time to keep us in debt. I remember when I first got into the investment business, the corporate firm that I was with started encouraging us. It was like, you need to drive a BMW or a Mercedes. You need to have a Rolex watch. You need to look the part. You need yeah. to look wealthy. <clears throat> yeah. And and I tend some to, of the brokest people I know had a Rolex. That right. They were struggling to make a payment on it, and some of the brokest people I know couldn't even get their BMW serviced because the service for those is so much more expensive than the service on the right. Chevrolet. Right. But you know the the thing is is that the Bible tells you that there's a path that seems right to a man that in the end it leads to death, and that's really what it is. So I started asking questions. I'm like, I'm like guys. I'm living in a truck. Have tri you ever had a BMW? No, no, no. I'm not saying I won't have one one yeah, day because they're yeah. cool cars. They're cool cars. But, um, <clears throat> but I got a lot more goals I got to hit before yes. I have one of those. Yeah. So, um, um, and, and I don't, I trailer. don't have any issues with that. But I, I told the, the sales trainer, I was like, look, man, I'm, I'm living in a trailer. I said, you know, my wife's staying at home and we're making sacrifices to do it. I've always been taught you keep your expenses low, mm -hmm. and you use leverage for for you know loans for business purposes not mm -hmm. consumption purposes mm -hmm. that's not always the case but that's the rule of thumb and uh, so one of the older guys that's you know he never really had a whole lot to say but he was there training people he told me he said look the only reason they want you in debt is it motivates people to go out and sell I've mm -hmm. got this house I've established this image mm -hmm. so I've got to, to do I've got, I've got to do whatever I need to do to maintain <laughs> yeah, it or I'll look it. like a fool <laughs> know all about it. so it's horrible advice but the reason those corporations give that advice is because it helps them be profitable if mm -hmm. they can put you so the government has taken that because the people that have been in charge have become politicians you know it's they want as much as they can get for themselves and I'm sorry I don't no one politician out there right now outside of maybe one or two that aren't getting any mainstream media that that aren't really in it for themselves mm -hmm. now that may not be the case on our local level okay i'm talking about on the national level and that's not always but that is the majority you can you can tell that's a majority by the by the decisions they're making mm -hmm. the other side of them <coughs> we have a courage problem which i'll come back to that so anyway you get these truckers in debt and now all of a sudden I can't sit there for mm -hmm. 60 days, right. you know, right. or, for two you, days. you know, <laughs> you know, I have you, if I pull you over, the laws are so ridiculous now that I'm going to find something. Mm -hmm. And if I want to charge you, I can charge you. That's mm -hmm. what's called a police state guys. Mm -hmm. And we have all allowed that to happen mm -hmm. on our watch. I had a $6,500 fine one time for something that was so minor and so min minute it was diesel leaking out on the ground and $6,500.
for a cleanup job for that, and it was just a little nothing. And I was like, seriously? So, so I'm seeing the abuse, and I'm seeing having to go to the bank and say, look, I need an extra $6,500, and they're like, what? For what? Well, <laughs> you know, well, it's not fair. It, it's a situation where the government comes in, and they're like, you know what? You get to operate at my if pleasure. Play, if you right? play with us, it, yes. At my pleasure. Yes. So, you know, <laughs> But back to the media. So, you know, one thing I'll say is, and, and we have to pay attention to this. Do you watch Fox now? Because I haven't watched them since the election. Okay. I don't watch CNN. I, I, I don't watch Fox. No, I've never watched Fox. I, yeah. don't, I don't watch any mainstream media, and I've been out of it for so long. Roth DeBelly wrote a, a white paper that's about 18 pages wrong, and if y'all want to look it up, it's, uh, I can't remember how to spell his first name, DeBelly, D-O-B-E-L-L-I that challenged me about 10 years ago, I read it, he said, no more news. And his really? Our, yeah, he said, no more news. Wow. He said, our news is national and global. He said, you watch the news and there's an earthquake in Haiti. Mm -hmm. Okay, it makes you feel horrible. You stress about it. You watch it and, you know, maybe you send some money or do things, but there's, you're so detached, you get used to being detached from the reality. So we tend to help people in our relationships and it takes away from human relationship and conversation. Mm -hmm. So, and, and then just the emotional, um, the emotional turmoil that you get. So mm -hmm. it's like I, I've got a family member that I go to their house and every time I'm over there, Fox News is, is going all the time. And they're not from LJ, this is from mm -hmm. South Georgia. Mm -hmm. And I, I finally, I'm like, look, I can't, I can't handle this. Because last time I looked at this was six months ago when I was in your living room and it's urgent alert, urgent alert, <laughs> urgent alert. And today it's urgent alert. Is there anything not urgent anymore, right? So, so basically what I do is I've sought out independent individuals that, that care, they're inquisitive, they are interested in finding the truth and they're courageous enough to be wrong and I pay for their services. Okay. So, I, I mean, I actually pay a, <clears throat> a, a, you don't have to pay as much as I do, but I pay and I read constantly. Mm -hmm. And a lot of the stuff I read is their opinions end up being wrong, but they're more right than they are wrong. So I was thinking about it last night, Holly and I were sitting around and everything that we're experiencing in our country right now, just the level of greed, the amount of power that the top 1% has and how we're taught in the institutions to, to, to maximize Excuse me. <laughs> it's funny. Sorry about that. It's a bad thing about live TV. <laughs> I didn't mean to be that funny today. Funny. Oh well. Okay. I don't know if that was Lord telling me to shut up or if, or if uh, that was just an accident. So I don't even know where I was going now. I'm embarrassed. You and but, Holly were talking. Yeah. About. So we were talking last night. And I've been pondering for some time, you know, just why is like, okay, so I'm not a big fan of Joe Rogan's appearance on the exterior. I refuse to listen to his podcast because when I had been referred to it to begin with, he's got a big third eye right over. So that's occult symbols, mm -hmm. okay? And I try mm -hmm. to avoid that as much as I can. Yeah. My faith is in Christ. I believe <laughs> Christ on, died on the cross and he's the only way to salvation. And he is my only hope. Cut me off in traffic and you'll think I'm the devil incarnate. Mm -hmm. And I apologize. I always have to, I think I have to say I'm saved by grace, not by. Yeah. <laughs> There's nothing about my salvation that I have earned. I can tell you that. <laughs> yeah. So, but that bothered me. But, but I had a couple of clients that are in the know in the medical field that are like, hey, you got to listen to his, his podcast with uh, Dr. Keith McCullough. So that was back first of December. I listened to it for like three hours. I think it's two and a half hours, something like that. Maybe it's not that long. And I was mind blown. So I did a whole bunch of research. And the thing that I liked about it was he asked interesting questions and he searched out the, the, the truth, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. Let's pull up this information and have a conversation. <laughs> and then he had Dr. Malone on. And as soon as Dr. Malone's on there, which was one of the inventors of the mRNA technology, and what he is warning and what he's saying the data is seeing and what we're saying the data is seeing, you know, and then uh, uh, it's a two and a half hour conversation. It was mind blowing. And every person that I have sent it to has changed their mind wow. on what the propaganda being sent out of this administration, the CNN, the Fox and whatever news channel you want to listen to out mm -hmm. there mm -hmm. is, um, 
is mind blowing. And I don't know what their motivation is, but it's not our health and safety, I can mm -hmm. assure you that. Mm -hmm. um, it, it seems more like a test case to see how far they can push the American people and just how much people are gonna accept their propaganda. Well anyway, so after Dr. Malone gets on there, I mean, even Jen Psaki, which is the, the mouthpiece for the Biden administration, comes out. <laughs> Don't get me started. <laughs> and, and, and says that Joe Rogan's misinformation <clears throat> needs to be taken into consideration. I, I can't remember the quote, but they allude to it, uh, mention him directly and then allude to him. That's, that's unconstitutional, okay? You, you, one thing about America is we, we have the courage to tell the truth, to accept the truth. People and have, driving Miss Daisy, she brings up the fact when they won't let her drive anymore that the Constitution still gives her her rights. <laughs> <laughs> it's so funny. So, but, but why? Why are people so afraid to look at the truth? Why are people so afraid to look at the truth about themselves? Is because we're a plastic-faced society. The moral decay that's taking place in our country right now is based on a courage problem. We don't have the courage to accept the fact that we're wrong. Mm -hmm. How many relationships do you know are blown to pieces because one of the parties that's most likely in the wrong absolutely refuses to admit they're wrong. Oh, a bunch. Okay. Yeah. But then I also see people, I, I, I heard a story recently about somebody that after 20 some odd years of marriage, he blew a gasket and yada, 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 and then 30 days later, they worked it out and they've been back together like 12 years or something. It was crazy. <clears throat> but, but we all, we all, uh, are we wrong? Uh, yeah. Okay. We're all wrong. We apologize oh, and we move on, and you go on, and you and you right. you know you don't blow your life up because of some silly, stupid something. Well, and, so. and tell me this: what what is love and relationship? Love and relationship is fighting through our weaknesses mm -hmm. and our mistakes. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. I mean, how do how do we learn? I cross you, you pop me. Yeah. Right. Okay. Yeah. yeah. I'm sorry. Yeah. Let's try this again. Yeah. Yeah. I cross you. I pop, you cross me, I pop you, iron sharpens iron, and we build that relationship. Yep, yep. What it really boils down to in our moral decay is we are so concerned about what other people think in our lives. We want to impress other people, and we're forgetting that we need to impress God and mm -hmm. His standard. We need to, that's, that's what <coughs> matters more than anything because everything that. that we have done will be disclosed in the future. Absolutely. And that is absolutely terrifying absolutely. because I'll tell you, I don't want y'all to know half the stuff I've done in my life. I'm hu humiliated by it. Yeah. I've asked the Lord for forgiveness and, and, and you try to get up and keep going again. So what, what God gives us the ability to do is be courageous enough to, to walk and to accept the truth. I don't know that Joe Rogan knows the Lord or not. It, mm -hmm. I, I doubt he's going to wear a wonder, third eye. Yeah, that's what I was about to I, say. No, that. I really don't think yeah, he does. He's yeah. not going to wear the third eye on yeah. his forehead if he yeah. does. Yeah. But, but the one thing I will give him. But maybe somebody could bring him to the Lord. They can. But God's you know? given him a platform and a, a, a desire to know the truth and the courage to follow the truth wherever it takes him and if he gets to a dead end and it's like well that's not the truth that's deceit he backs up and starts asking questions mm -hmm. and that's that's how we problem solve we're supposed to be problem solve what made america great is we were problem solvers mm -hmm. we we believe that that we're all created equal before god and you know what you may have different strengths than i do and i may have different strengths than you do but there's things that you do a lot better than me and vice versa. Mm -hmm. And if we see that for people, every person has value and you don't have a government that's sitting there going, you need to do this because I tell you to. You need mm -hmm. to do this because I tell mm -hmm. you to. Mm -hmm. And then putting the pressure and the manipulation and the control tactics in place. It's wrong. You can judge them by their fruits. And, and if somebody is afraid to hear somebody else speak, then they need to be removed from office completely mm -hmm. because because we have the choice to ignore it and we mm -hmm. need to be mentally strong enough to go well that's a lie mm -hmm. right mm -hmm. you know i was so shocked last night because as we were watching driving miss daisy nick comes in and he said what's that and he said oh that's morgan freeman i love morgan freeman i said that's driving miss daisy he said like what morgan is that freeman. he said i've never seen it i said what movie. I said, you've never seen Driving Miss Daisy? He said, no. And I said, well, you're going to watch it. I said, tomorrow night, you sit down and you're going to watch this whole movie because it's a movie in life's lessons. 
and it starts. Do you remember the scene in Alabama where the um, they're in the her new black Cadillac and they stop on the side of the road to have their lunch, and the troopers stop them and they make very nasty comments as they leave them because right. yes, that was America then, and America is much better than that today. Yes. And and so I told Nick, I was trying to explain the story to him. I said, son, I can't explain this. You just gotta watch this from start to finish. I said, this was the, the world I grew up in. This was the world I lived in. This was the neighborhood I lived in. And I said, I love that area, and I loved my little precious old neighbors, and I learned so much from them. And I think that's something we're missing in America today. We're not sitting down with those older people, and acknowledging their their knowledge is so they've been there Paul they've done things that we never ever thought of they've had rations for food they have survived things when we cleaned out Granny Harris's house we found all these little war ration coupons that they were so frugal they mm -hmm. didn't even use all their war ration coupons we can't we can't Can you imagine, imagine that we can't imagine we're in a throwaway society, yeah, I mean, and, we, and we're only four gen, three generations from yes. a society that was war rationed. Yeah. It's crazy. Well, it comes back to you know, just one of my favorite quotes, and you know, not to be politically correct, this is the quote, good men create good times. Good times create weak men. Weak men create hard times, and hard times create good men, and that's a cycle that we go through. Mm -hmm. So you look at it, why does wealth not go beyond three generations in a family, typically? And really the only way it goes beyond three generations nowadays is because they get into the political system and they game the system so mm -hmm. that they can protect their families. Mm -hmm. But uh, that's why dynasties, and dynasties will fall. Why did the Roman Empire fall? Why will the American Empire fall? It's because we walk away from the decisions and the moral character that helped us become who we are and we take what we have for granted and and what I find and I try to teach my children this is you know there's an arrogance that's taught today the intellectual community the colleges are destroying our society because they believe that they know more than the rest of us mm -hmm. it, you know as N Nicholas uh, as, uh, Taleb, Nassim Taleb uh, says they're intellectuals yet idiots. Mm -hmm. They have no wisdom, but they have a lot of knowledge. They mm -hmm. just don't know how to apply that knowledge. Mm -hmm. Wisdom's having, knowing how to apply the knowledge you have. So the younger generation looks at their grandparents, they go, well, you don't know how to opera, operate an iPhone, you're stupid, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. Or you don't know how to do this technologically, mm -hmm. you're stupid. Mm -hmm. Well. Well, yeah, they did. But did't can go out here and take the tractor apart and put it together piece by piece. Yeah, or I know how to save money and I know how to put food aside for the future mm -hmm. and who do they pick up the phone and call? Mm -hmm. And it's not till later in life that they understand. <laughs> so it's our arrogance, our humility, I mean our lack of humility that's causing us to miss a wealth of knowledge that can help our country become a better place. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And what do we do? I love to be told great things about myself, but it scares the absolutely <laughs> poo out of me because every time that I'm like, you well, fail. every time I'm like, oh, I'm somebody, God's like, whack, you know? <laughs> yeah, yeah. And uh, and, I, and I appreciate that. That's not a bad thing because the yeah. Bible says God disciplines those that he loves. Yeah. If he lets you get away with something for a long time, then the consequences are just going to be a lot more severe. Right. But, um we're, we're, we're just missing a humility and inquisitiveness to realize that, that every person has something fantastically unique to offer to our society, mm -hmm. no matter what their problems are. And if we're humble enough to, to see, like I can see, God speaks to us through all kinds of people. Mm -hmm. and, but we, I, we don't believe in God in a society anymore. Honestly, I've never met this man. I've never heard of this man. I have no idea who this man is. And when I opened that today and I thought, are you kidding me? Because I had this conversation last night and I said, as we approach a time in our society when I, every day I'm reading that somebody is sitting by her husband's bedside, somebody is sitting by his wife's bedside, somebody is being a caretaker to a 40 something year old in the hospital on all kinds of, you know, kidney support, this support. And I'm like, holy cow. But there's still, um, there's still an element of love and caring out there that people are doing that. 
And I, w I was reading a, a very special, um, her husband's been had surgery, I think his last surgery was Sunday. She's been sitting by his bedside for days. He's not recovering, but he is responding in certain ways. And she's just sitting there and she's there for him. And I thought, how precious is That's that? That's unbelievable. How love. precious is that? Yeah. And and I just and you think, you know, it's a it's a big day when your husband's oxygen gets turned on when he's been on oxygen for thirteen days. And they turn it down and oh my gosh, he can breathe on his own, you know. But think about what it's like to sit there knowing that your loved one is going to be gone from you in just one moment. It, it, it is just a moment away. I was telling my daughter a story yesterday about a 27-year-old whose parents both had COVID and the parents brought the COVID home to their 27-year-old married daughter who then died from COVID That's so and left a three-year-old and a five-year-old. Then the husband couldn't handle what was going on and the husband dropped the kids off with the grandparents mm. because he went into a depression. Yeah. You know, well, I mean, we don't hit him know in the mouth what with tomorrow is going to bring us. Yeah. No, we don't. No, we have no idea. But we know who can give us the strength to get through it. Right. And I think that this, this man, I can't wait to meet him. He must have a lot of strength because when you think about, I don't know if you know about men, but men usually don't like taking care of women when there's a health issue because we're tough. You know, we got you, you. There's a lot to do to take care of a woman. Oh man, Holly there's had a the lot. Holly had the flu last week. I think she had the flu. We don't know. She she didn't have to go to the doctor. I know it wasn't COVID because that yeah. hit us at Christmas. Right. And uh, you know, she's up, and I'm like, well, what can I do for you? And it's nothing. She does everything. I'm like, help us. I'm like, okay. I'm not going to ask anymore. I'm trying. What can I do? Yeah. I yeah. guess I, I guess when you just collapse and you can't crawl across the floor, yeah. I'll pick you up and carry you somewhere. So we I are, did it. We are a very independent breed. Yeah. Yes. And that's and, not a bad thing. And as long as we can do for ourselves, that's what we want to do. But when you read this, and like this lady couldn't do anything for herself, and her husband doing it all. Yeah. I mean, that's that's a man. That's a big deal. That, that's, that's God's kind of man. That's, that's God's kind of man. man. And yeah. I am so grateful that my Uncle Charles displayed the unbelievable amounts of love that he did to my Aunt Connie. Mm -hmm. She had Parkinson's. He carried her to every doctor he could carry her to. He did research. He took care of her in a manner that is glorious mm -hmm. from the outside mm -hmm. to look in. Yeah, yeah. Because it's not what we want in life, right? I mean, we want somebody to take care of us. We want it to be right. glorious. We want to have fun. But he stayed right there with her and wow. cared for her and made sacrifices in his life that I can't even, that he's never even talked about. Not once did he ever complain about having mm -hmm. to take care of mm -hmm. her. Now, he shared the, the struggle and stress over, but but did it with grace. Mm -hmm. And and what what an unbelievable shining light of love to share in this world that, you know, and I talk to my kids about it. I'm like, you know, I pray Holly never has to take care of me. Mm -hmm. And I pray that I don't have to, to take care of her in that manner because none of us want to do that. Right. But I will. Yeah. Because yeah. I've seen just the encouragement that that gives from somebody in my family mm -hmm. stepping up to the plate and giving up their wants to, to show love. Yeah. Well, um, it, it's so weird because as you look at your life, and, and I, I don't know why lately, I've told my daughter some things that she had no idea about. And she was like, really? Really? Are you kidding me? And so she said, Mommy, you've got to write all this down. You've got to write it down. You've got to write it down. And I had started writing a book, but after Angela died, I couldn't complete it. Well, oh, okay, it man. wasn't time to complete it because my life hadn't been completed yet. Yeah. I hadn't found my brother, Buddy. I didn't know a lot about my father at that time, but I do now, and I do understand that I am who I am because all my life I was looking for my father. And so all my life I wanted to succeed, I wanted to be this, I wanted to be this, I wanted to have this, just in case my daddy came along and he could say I'm proud of my daughter. Yep. We all want somebody to be proud of us. We all want somebody to say good job, good job. And I was always looking for my father's acceptance for my father's praise for my father and sadly my father died I think in the year 2000 mm. and I never got to meet him so as close as I got to him was a telephone and that was really weird to I'm grow so up as his child and never you know because because yeah. it's important to be that parent and it's important to 
show that love, and I never got that. But my mother always loved my father more than anyone. And I think that's why she loved me so much. And I was telling Dawn that, and she said, that is so weird, Mama. She said, do you think that's why? Because my mother was gonna have an abortion and instead decided to keep me when she was eight months pregnant. She, Praise the Lord. She made up her mind to keep me. And it was just so weird because I was a treasure to her, but I was never anything to my father. And you think about, how does that mold somebody? How does that make them, you know, I wanted to accomplish everything just in case he showed up so he could say, that's my daughter, that's my daughter. And I had a stepfather, and, and it's so funny because my sister and I laugh about this a lot. Daddy, who adopted me when I was five, um, he, I was his pet when he could get what he wanted. You know, because I would always say yes, and I would yep. always write the check, and I would always do this. And, I, and, and my sister said, you know, he's using you. And I said, yeah, I know. I figured it out. I was a little bit slow. And, and she said, you know, he's always been a user. He's always, you know, and I said, yeah, I'm figuring it out. I'm figuring it out. But I wanted that father's love, even yep. though he was my adoptive father, and, and he had been mean to my mother. And, you know, but we all want that acceptance, and we all want to yep. be loved. And if we look around, every single day we are loved beyond because Jesus loves us. Every he loves single us in day. An every single day. Believable way. Yeah. In a, no way that we as humans can understand. And we don't get it. No. We don't get it. And, and I'll tell you, it's, it's, it's heartbreaking. It's heartbreaking because our society doesn't do a good job. And I think there's reasons for that. To. And the church does a horrible job, a horrible job of pointing out the responsibility that fathers have mm -hmm. over their family. The, the way God set up the family structure, uh, Jordan Peterson, there are all kinds of studies that talks about you're playing Russian roulette. You're sticking a gun to your kid's head mm -hmm. if you're a father and you don't show love and mercy and leadership and you're pulling the trigger with one bullet in there. Mm -hmm. Now. Only God can save children from that and, and, and guide them through and bring them through. But really, it, in my life, I've seen one extreme or another. Mm -hmm. You're either hyper successful and hyper driven or hyper in the other direction. <clears throat> right. And, and the, the, these fathers will answer to God one day, mm -hmm. no matter what. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. They will answer Absolutely. for what they've done Absolutely. and the lack of, the and lack that's of why, fatherhood. No matter what gets thrown at me, I want God to look down and say, you know, you tried because I, I did. I, I drove miles and miles and miles trying to find my daddy because mm -hmm. I wanted to just sit down and talk to him. Yeah. And then after he was gone, this amazing, actually, um, Freddie found my brother on the internet accidentally. Wow. And it was just crazy. And so we got to meet, we got to spend time together. He actually came here and did the show with me. And this was just, but it was too late in my life because my father was gone. Right. And, and then my brother and I would have conversations and he'd say, I cannot believe you've never been around our daddy. He said, there's so much about you that is so much like him. Hmm. And I thought good, bad, or indifferent. You know? <laughs> so, there were some bad things about so him. So was he close to? <clears throat> he, he was raised by him. He was raised he by was him. Raised by him. And he's the reason that I didn't get to be around daddy because this was the third wife and she was expecting my brother Buddy when I was in the picture and he just said it's not a good time to tell my wife I have other children. Oh, so, so he, he chose, was he, just he didn't have the to. courage to face the truth. Exactly. And and he later wanted, when she found out about me, she was not happy that he had not been honest and upfront about yeah. me because I was his child. And and I'm so much like him and it's so crazy. And then I had another brother who died um, in an accident and so my father lost one son but he still had me but he never came after me he never came after me he never came to talk to me he never came to spend time with me so I wonder it, was it a it lack of courage was it a lack of courage to face you was it a lack of courage to face the mistake he made I don't know I don't know, hmm. I, 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 don't know. I, I wanted to ask that question why couldn't we just you know but he never did. I'm so, so sorry for that. And it, he died at 72. And um, so, you know, the, the time bomb, I knew he was getting older, but he had brain cancer. Mm. So, 
I, I didn't get to ask him all the questions. I, I had a list. You got, you got your list? Yeah. <laughs> I had me a list. <laughs> <laughs> I had a list. Now, you've got a few things on there. What, what haven't we talked about? Some, some, well, this is just kind of thoughts that came to me. And I will say, I never knew this. Like, I mean, we live TV, and we've been doing this for, what, 15 years? And we really don't talk that much in between, and it just goes wherever it goes. So. Yep. Well, it's like telling my daughter about it, and she was blown away. She's like, I didn't know all this. Yeah. And I said, Mama came home with a 50-cent piece in her pocket and me in her belly, and that was it. And so wow. she decided to keep me. So yeah. Praise the Lord for that. Yeah. The world's a better place because yeah. you're here. Yeah, thank you. So, um, yeah, so I just wrote down, you know, you were talking about road rage earlier and what they're doing to the truckers. And, and I've, I've just been spending a lot of time thinking lately about how shallow our society is has oh, become. Yeah. yeah. And I've spent a lot of time thinking about <laughs> how, just how how self-centered, self-focused that we are. Why, right? Mm -hmm. I know it's moral decay, but this is what happens when societies collapse. So I don't know how long it's going to be. I mean. The Federal Reserve is is basically printing us into prosperity, and something's going to break at mm -hmm. some point. Mm -hmm. um, we're destroying our kids because I mean, I, I, and I've got it at this point. I've known it's been an issue, and I've I've tried to help my kids make good decisions and try to save for them, and and spend a lot of time, you know, just trying to help lay a foundation that they could be in a little bit better place, but. When, when my daughter and her fiance are having to find an apartment and just the sheer amount of taking advantage of people who need apartments from a corporate level and people are okay with it, mm -hmm. right? They uh, don't have a choice maybe and so because the corporate is running. Well, I mean, we, we basically have a lot of monopolies today. Mm -hmm. And um, so there are fewer companies. And the barriers to entry for business, it's not like I can wake up and go, you know what, I'm tired of the airline industry. Mm -hmm. I'm tired of the way they treat me, so I'm going to go start a company. You could do that in the 1950s. Yeah. But you know what? That club takes a lot of money. Mm -hmm. You're not in it. Yeah. And neither yeah. am I. Yeah. And there's not a single bank out there that's going to give you the money to start it. And, and if they do, the government's going to shut you down. Right. So. At, what about a cell phone company? Service is terrible. I mean, you know, so so the problem is, is they're just, they're in a position where that's maximum profitability and you've got these CEOs that are running around and dancing and, you know, oh, I'm making so much money and they surround themselves with a board that's going to make sure that they take care of each other and we're just minions to them. Mm -hmm. And I don't care if you're, I don't care if you're making $2 million a year, you're still a minion mm -hmm. because you're not in the class of the people that are making $100 million a year because mm -hmm. they're the ones that are controlling things now. But, but we still worship people in this country. Oh my gosh, Trump's made a lot of money. I want to be like him. So I think he's got the answer for everything. Okay. No, that's not the case. So, but the Tulsi Gabbards of the world, I'm not a, you know, I'm a political atheist. I just about laid myself out there. <laughs> the Tulsi Gabbards of the world and then the Ron DeSantis's, nobody wants to, see, the establishment doesn't want to see them running, but that's who we need because oh, yeah, they're Ron, open, courageous debate. I hope going to, I hope he's going to win and win big. But yeah. I just got to thinking about the road rage, okay? All the hate that's in society now, all the, just all the hate, it's symptoms of a deeper problem. It's, yeah, there's always going to be the occasional person that maybe they got bad news and you cut them off and they blow up and it has nothing to do with you. Mm -hmm. It has to do with all the pressure in their life. But the problem is 70% of the population is doing everything they can do to get by now. Mm -hmm. They can't make enough money. You know, it's not like you can go start a business to compete with Walmart or, right. oh my gosh, Amazon. Who the heck can compete <coughs> with them now? Right. I mean, you, at least Amazon gives you the opportunity to be a part of that. So. There's symptoms of a deeper problem and it's moral decay and something has to break. I don't know when it breaks and I don't know the answer on how to survive the breaking, mm -hmm. but it's clear throughout history that we're getting ready to repeat the mistakes of the past because we think we're smarter than the people in the past mm -hmm. and that those things aren't going to happen to us. Yep. So that's that's what I had wrote down. Well, and, I didn't plan on saying it. And I had a negative, I had a seminar a couple of weeks ago, and he said bottom's going to fall out. I'm just like scared to death. So, well, I'm going to do something. We we didn't do Facebook Live today, and I, I didn't do it for a reason. But we're going to do the last couple of minutes Facebook Live, and um, we're going to get 
uh, I hope we can get Paul and I both in there. I don't know if we can or not. There you go. Okay. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Pop it up yeah. On the phone. Here's that. Yeah. Gotcha. Yeah. There you go. We. Um, I, I didn't do it all live today because we're we're gonna put it on YouTube in just a little bit, and you'll get everything in its entirety. Nope. It's not gonna stay. It's it? not gonna work. No. But anyway, oh, um, I wanted to share yeah. this book with everybody on Facebook because a few people don't have our ETC services, which is kind of sad, but we want you to all call ETC 706-253-2271 and hook yourself up with ETC. Um, I want to share this book with y'all. He's going to come and be on with us soon. I don't know when, but I can guarantee it will be before Valentine's Day. It started my day off giving me hope for any and everybody who's struggling and any and everybody who, you know, Kenneth Ray can come in my office and I tear up because I know the story of him taking care of his wife. I know that if Holly had a problem, you would take care of her. I know if, if you had a problem, she would take care of you. We have a dear friend here in LJ who that didn't happen for him and his wife left him and he has been here and there and yonder and everywhere and it breaks my heart. My grandfather had multiple sclerosis and my grandmother took care of him every day of his life until the day he died at 68 wow. pounds. So I know true love and I know that you can be that person and you can take care of them. And I think that God places us here to take care of each other. And when I saw this story and I didn't know how it was going to end up, I didn't know that his wife ended up being a quadriplegic. I'm like, oh my gosh. I just think it's going to be a love story, and it is the ultimate love story. Yeah. But the truth is, without God, he could not have gone through this. No. He couldn't have done this. No. And so um, I want you're going to read it. I'm going to read it. We're going to we're going to blast this thing everywhere. We're going to have him on the show in the near future. And I hope that people will buy this and share this story, share this love, and and more than that. Share love with people you know that you forget to tell them you love them. He knows I love him. I mean, Paul's mm -hmm. like one of my favorite forever friends, <laughs> I people. Love I, I love him. And he's one of my strengths. And we all need to draw from a strength because sometimes we don't have the strength we need. And I went in the other day and I was talking to a girl and she reminded me of something I did years ago. And it had to do, I'll just tell y'all, it had to do with the drug dealer. And yes, I did kick in a door. <laughs> and she said, oh, I never forget the day you did that. And she said, that was the funniest thing. And my daughter said, then, Mama, you need to write a book. And she said, you know, you've done some things that uh, were a little bit off the cuff. I said, yeah, I know it, but I had a daughter who was on drugs. We've all been through so much, mm -hmm. but we have survived it. You've had personal things that you've had to deal with. We've all had to do it, but God has been there for each of us. Yes. And I think that's something that we just need to share every single day. God is love, and love never fails. 1 Corinthians 13.8, 13, love never fails. So it is time for us to get out of here. I love you. I love you. I love, love you. you too, Thank Sherry. you for being here. And if you need financial advice, pick up the phone and call Paul Kiker at 706-253-7285. 7285. And I'll see you again soon, only on ETC. Check out our YouTube channels. Don't forget Sherry Martin, Sherry Martin 2009, and Heart of the Home. Check it out, and please subscribe to all three. We're trying to figure out how to get them all three put together, so all the videos will be together. We've got about 580 80 programs on there now. So that's exciting. I will see you again soon. Bye, y'all.